Now we will go into how to wire the system for the robot. As a warning though, do not attach the battery to the components until after everything is wired and you have double checked the connections to make sure there are no stray wires, no short circuit, and nothing is plugged into where it isn't. Because if you do, you could fry some expensive components. So let's start with the power distribution board. So first thing, let's connect, uh, let's connect the power to the robo wheel. We do that by taking wires that are stripped at the end, preferably black, preferably black and red, so you can differentiate between them. And the way that these connections work is you take a screwdriver, or you could use your finger for the matter, and you push down on these connectors, and that opens up a gate. So what we are going to do, we're going to look at the controller power. This is the one that goes to the robo reel. We're going to press on the wire, and we are going to make sure the wire goes in, and then we release, and then give it, okay, so that was a bad connection. You give it a tug or two to make sure that it's fully connected. Now that is connected, and I know that will not come out. And then we do the same thing for the other wire. That's a secure connection. When you connect, make sure that there are no stray wires coming out, because if there are stray wires, they could short circuit between these and it could fry something. And that's the reason why we have this 10 amp fuse, just in case something like that happens. So make sure this is always in place. Next up, let's find out how to connect it to the robo reel. To connect it to the robo reel, we need a small uh, flat head screwdriver, such as this one, that is small enough to churn the screws in here. So the V is for vo uh, the red wire and the C is for the black wire. So we put the V in, as you can see, there's a gate, there's a small opening. We make sure we put the wire inside the V, make sure it's inside the gate. And then as we turn the screw, it tightens the gate. I have the screw turned the wrong way. We have it, and then give it a tug or two to make sure it's secure. To demonstrate the connections, pay attention what happens as I screw in the screw. Uh, you can see that the gate is closing. The gate is closing and that's really what clamps. And then turning it the other way is what opens it. So we're just going to connect that. Stray wire came out, so I'm going to just make sure I retwist the wire so that there are no strays. And we secure. Give it a tug or two to make sure it's in place. And now we have the robot robo wheel connected. Next up, we are going to talk about connecting the power to the VCM. So similarly, we get the same wires stripped at the ends. And now we go to the green one. It doesn't matter which one you uh, which one you put it in, as long as they're next to each other. So for example, red and black and red and black. Do not use this black and this red. Make sure they're the ones on the edges. So same thing, take a screwdriver, open up the gate, put it in, make sure there's no stray wires, open the gate, give it a few tugs, make sure it's in there secure, and we're done. Do the same for the red wire. And we're good. Now we're going to connect it to the VRM. The VRM, again, it's quite evident that black goes to black, red goes to red. And now we have our VRM connected to the power. Next up is attaching the modem. Now, because the modem is a more sensitive component, we attach it to the VRM. We use a connector such as this one, which has the input to the modem on one end and stripped wires on the other end. And this will go into the VRM. You should get this part, you should get this piece in your kit of parts. As you can see on the back of the modem, we have the power right here and we have the two ethernet cables. So 
So we attach the power and we take our other end of our cable and we attach it to the one that says 12 volts, two amps. And it's the same case as the other connectors. Push in with a screwdriver or something. You can use your fingernail. Uh, put it in, give it a few tugs and make sure it's out. And also same thing, make sure that the red and black are next to each other. Don't use red and black in the middle because those do not correspond with each other. Put it in, give it a tub or two, and that is insecure. Now we have connected our modem. Next up, we are going to attach our ethernet cable from our modem to the robo reel to establish a connection between them. We use an ethernet cable, an ethernet cable will do. And we connect it to the furthest one from the power. The one that says 802.3 AF power over ethernet. That's what the POE stands for. We plug in the ethernet cable to that end. And the other end goes onto the robo reel. And now you have your modem connected. Next thing we are going to attach is our robot signal light. That's very simple. Uh, there will be a link in the description on how to set up your robot signal light. It's not too difficult. Uh, you just have to connect a few wires. Um, but right here, your RSL, the one with the three lines, that's ground, and that's your black wire. And then the S is your red wire. And you just plug it in. And now you have your robot signal light attached. Now that we have everything attached, we can connect to power. And just before you do establish that auto, all your connections are secure. For example, I checked the second connection and it just came out. So I'm going to reattach it and make sure that it, it is secure and won't come off because things like that could cause you problems. So make sure all your connections are secure. Nothing is coming out. And now you can connect your battery. Your battery does require a little setup. Again, that will be in the description. And you connect it. And after that, we turn on a robot signal light everything should light up. Robot signal light should light up, modem should light up, a robo reel lights up, a VRM lights up, and our power distribution board lights up. So everything's working fine. To turn it off, we just press this red button. All right, next up, we're going to talk about the motor controllers. And just to free up some space, I took off the robot signal light for now. So let's start off by talking about the talons. Uh, this looks like quite a mess but um, each one of these talons are separate, are separate units and we just connected four of them each other because we're using four different motors to drive our base. And as I said before, you have your power, you have the ones connected to your motor, and then you have the CAN bus. And the way the CAN bus works is that they connect all your motor controllers in one line. And then from, those, from that, as you can see, there's two ends. One end connects to the power distribution board to provide power, the other one connects to your robo reel to get controlled. And as you can see here, we just bundled everything up, but we bundle everything up just to kind of keep it a little more compact. Could probably do a better job than us. But these two cables right here, green connects to green and yellow connects to yellow. So as you can see that one cable from here, we keep one cable out to start the uh, line of CAN wires. And then we take this one, we connect it to one of the ones on the other one, making sure green to green and yellow to yellow. And then we take the other one and we connect it again to another pair on the other one, keep making sure green goes to green, yellow goes to yellow. And we keep going on, as you can see here, green, yellow, green, yellow. And then we end off here. So it should in basically be one giant line of can wires. Next up, we are going to attach these power wires into the power distribution board. And then these, so these connectors are called Wago connectors. And the way they work is that it's a gate that opens up and down. Now we are going to connect our motor controllers to the power distribution board. So as you can see, these are certain type of connectors called Wago connectors. And you get a flat head that's small enough to fill in, fit into this top part. And you push down. And as you can see, there is a gate that opens up. As you 
you can see there's a gate that opens up and then as I release it closes and that's what clamps onto the wire. Again, black and red pairs. Make sure that the two are right next to each other so these two are not a pair, but these two are a pair. So black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. And we're going to connect it. Again, just twist your wires to make sure there's no strays. Put your flat head in here and lift it up. And then insert your uh, wire into the cable. And once you're sure that it's in, let go, give it a tug or two, and now we have it secured. And we do the same thing for the rest of the wires. So I'll do this one, I'll do a few more. And the same process is repeated for the rest of the wires. We're just gonna connect the CAN bus, and it's the same deal with most of the other connectors, uh, yellow and green. Again, make sure that they're right next to each other so these two middle ones don't form a pair. So we'll connect the green one, push in, give it a tug two, two, or two, and same with the yellow. There you go. Now we have power to our entire thing. Now we need to complete the loop by putting the other ones into the CAN bus. Now you can see L is green and H is yellow. So green and yellow. Ah, the wire is frayed and that's not good. So twist it, put the wire back in. There we go. Now all our components are wired up and we can attach it to power once again. And we will see, we should see the motor controllers light up. So connect the battery, close the circuit breaker and our motor controller should light up soon. But no, they did not light up because we forgot one thing, and that is the fuses. As I said earlier, you need fuses for these things to complete the circuit. So right now it's an open circuit, and these two belong to this fuse. As you can see, like right here, this fuse comes to this one, this fuse would go to, to these two. So we put a fuse in, and as soon as I put it in, the motor controller lights up. Now look again, it's off. As I put the fuse in, completes the circuit, and it powers on. Put all of them in. And now all our motor controllers have powered. If I turn it off and back on, everything works as intended. And last, type, last thing is I want to talk about the spark controller. It uses a PWM. As you can see on the bottom, it says PWM. And we connect the motor controller and when we connect it to the PWM on the Robo Rio we can see that black corresponds to ground so we make sure that our black goes on the outermost of the Robo Rio now we have our spark controller connected and then we have power that connects much like this so imagine instead of one of these talons we have a spark these wires would be connected here and then these wires would be coming out from here onto the motor and the only downside of Spark is that you're limited to 10 because you have values from zero to nine. With any CAN related uh, motor controllers, you are only limited by how many identities you can give to each unique motor controller, which I think turns out to be around 99. So those are the differences between Talons and Sparks. So now just to show you how things connect to the robot, uh, we take our two wires and we crimp on connectors to the end could be any connectors you want and you simply attach them to the wires it doesn't matter if green goes to red or white goes to red uh, the only difference is that it will just turn in reverse and that can be changed in the program and that is everything about wiring up your robot